guided back propagation. The visualization of features directly can be less informative. Hence we use the training procedure of back propagation to activate the filters for better visualization. Since we pick what neurons are to be activated for back propagation, it is called guided back propagation. In this section, we will implement the guided back propagation to visualize the features. We will define the size and load the VGG model as shown here. The layers are made of a dictionary with layer names as keys and the layer from the model with weights as a key value for ease of access. Now we will take a first convolution layer from the fifth block, block 5 underscore conv1 for computing the visualization. The input and output are defined here. We have to define the loss function. The loss function will maximize the activation of a particular layer. This is a gradient descent process rather than the usual gradient descent as we are trying to maximize the loss function. For gradient ascent, it's important to smoothen the gradient. So we smoothen the gradient in this case by normalizing the pixel gradients. This loss function converges rather quickly. The output of the image should be normalized to visualize it back. Gradient ascent is used in an optimization process to get the maxima of a function. Now we can start the gradient ascent optimization by defining the evaluator and gradients, as shown next. Now the loss function has to be defined and gradients have to be computed. The iterator computes the loss and gradient values over iterations as shown. The input is a random gray image with some noise added to it. A random image is generated and scaling is done, as shown here. The optimization of the loss function is started now, and for some filters, the loss values may be zero which should be ignored, as shown here. After this optimization, normalization is done with mean subtraction and adjusting the standard deviation. Then, the filters can be scaled back and clipped to the gradient values, as shown here. These filters are randomly picked and are visualized here. The code to stitch the images and produce an output as shown is available along with the code bundles. The visualization becomes complicated over later layers because the receptive field of the convents becomes bigger. Some filters look similar but only rotated. The hierarchy of visualization can be clearly seen in this case. The visualization becomes complicated over later layers because the receptive field of the convents becomes bigger. Some filters look similar but only rotated. The hierarchy of visualization can be clearly seen in this case as shown by Zyla. Direct visualization of different layers is shown in the following image. The first two layers look like edge and corner detectors. Gabor-like filters only appear in the third layer. Gabor filters are linear and traditionally used for texture analysis. We have seen the visualization of features directly and by guided back propagation. Next we will see how to implement DeepDream for visualization.